Today I have a very special unboxing. This is my first David Austin Rose. So I told you guys about the project that I was working on the backyard porch where I wanted to trellis roses so that when we sit on the bench, we have a nice view to look at. And at first I wanted to choose an Eden Rose. I fell in love with the shape, the color, but after some more thought, I realized that it might not get as much sun as it wants. So I decided to go with a different variety. This weighs nothing by the way, so I'm a little bit... Uh, hold on. Oh wait. Did I buy a bare root? This is what it looks like. Oh my gosh. I know it looks a bit scary, but this is a James Galway rose. It has this beautiful ombre effect. Upon first inspection, it looks like it's already trying to break dormancy. As you can see here, it's starting to bud out. So that's a good sign. Don't really like the look of that, but we're gonna see, we're gonna go with it. The other canes look really nice and thick. And the fact that it's already breaking dormancy is good because it's really warm here. And actually, there are several buds that are starting to come up. The description says that the James Galway Climber is a vigorous climber with neat domed flowers, delicious old rose fragrance, very disease resistant, and it gets about 10 feet tall. Because it's going to be in a pot, it's going to be elevated a bit more, so it's going to look taller than it really is. But this is what I'm going to have on one side of the porch, and on the other side, I'm going to have the coral vine. So I think the two colors together are going to look really beautiful. And I think the last thing to do is just pot it up. So before I do that, I'm actually going to soak it in water just to rehydrate these roots. And in the meantime, I'm going to start mixing up the soil. These are the pots that I wound up going with. They have this really nice, simple design, which I think will complement the roses without overpowering them. I like the fact that it's a solid color, but it's a bit more intricate than a plain white pot. The only thing is that they don't have holes on the bottom and I have one on either side. Oh, wait, hold up. Oh, they do have the holes. Hold on. All I have to do is do the screwdriver thing. Okay, but I don't know where that screwdriver is at. So I'm just going to drill the holes. This way I don't have to worry about any drainage issues. And eventually I might also put some risers on the sides. But right now I think it looks great. For the soil mix, I'm gonna begin with some peat moss. Peat moss is more acidic than cocoa core. Cocoa core is a little bit more neutral. Roses like slightly more acidic soil. I tend to eyeball things and really go for the texture more than anything else. I know roses like more loamy soil. They want it to be well draining. They don't want to be sitting in standing water. So I wanna make sure that my potting mix holds moisture because I'm in the desert, but it still needs to be well draining so that my roses don't get root rot and then die off. So I'm just breaking up any large chunks. I think homemade compost is best, but I don't have any. So I'm gonna be using mushroom compost. Ooh. To this, I'm gonna add some sand. This is gonna help with the drainage. Now, because my pot is pretty deep, what can oftentimes happen if the soil isn't well draining enough is it'll start to go anaerobic when it becomes very compacted over time. And when you water it in, it can start to smell a little bit like eggs, which is why I want this potty mix to be extra well draining while retaining some moisture. So I'm gonna use vermiculite because vermiculite allows the soil to be well draining, but hold on to water so that your plant's roots don't dry out and it helps with soil structure. I want to make sure that the entire pot, because it's pretty deep, has enough oxygen in it so that it doesn't go anaerobic, which is why I'm also going to add perlite. Perlite also helps with water retention, but it also helps with aeration. As you guys can see, I'll add something that holds moisture, but then I'll add something else that allows it to be well draining. So it's sort of like a scale that I keep tipping. So when I add something, I try to balance it out with something else. That's what's been working for me so far. Next, I'm going to start mixing until it's well incorporated. Mixing up the soil is the most tedious part, but probably the most important as well. One of the main reasons I like to mix up the soil with the dried peat moss before rehydrating it is because I feel like it distributes more evenly with the rest of the ingredients for the soil. Because in the past, when I rehydrated it first, I feel like it sort of clumps together and it becomes very heavy. 
So even when I mix everything else in, I can't get it to the right texture that I want. And this seems to be a lot better on my back. If I bring you in closer, you can start to see the difference taking shape in the texture of the soil. So this is the beginning point, and this is what the end point will wind up looking like. Next, I'm gonna start watering it in. I like to work in sections, so I'll water it in. I'll start turning it so I get to the dry spots and continue the process until the soil is nice and moist. I wanna show you how the soil is gonna start looking like. There's still a few dry spots. As you can see, it holds moisture, but it breaks apart very easily. It doesn't just clump up, which is exactly what I want. And I have sand, perlite, and vermiculite running throughout. Next is the fun part, which is actually filling up the pot and planting our rows. It's been a little over two hours. This is our rows, beautiful. So let's go over a few things. Here we have this beautiful root system. This is the rootstock for the rose. And right here, you can see it's a bit more swollen. This is the graft union. So when you plant the rose, you don't wanna plant it down here. You wanna plant it slightly above the graft union. So once it's covered with soil, it'll pretty much look like that. I added compost to my mix, but I didn't add any worm castings because I'm gonna add them right now. These are some homemade worm castings. I'm adding quite a few because I want the soil that it first comes in contact with to be really nice and rich. I'm also going to add some mycorrhizae. This is going to help with root development. When that rose wakes up, this is going to help those roots establish very nicely. Then I'm going to add some fertilizer. This is Job's Organic Knockout Rose, granular plant food. Ah, my hands are too slippery. There we go. I'm gonna add a good healthy sprinkling in there and I'm gonna mix it in. Now that I'm happy with my height, I'm gonna take a bit more mycorrhizae and I'm gonna just sprinkle it along these roots. I wanna give this rose the best head start possible. So I'm gonna place it not facing up, but facing a little bit to the side because I wanna train it to start going up this way. And here's what I'm left with. The last step is to mulch it. And this is what it should look like in the end. I'm gonna water it in and then we just need to wait for it to wake up. Eventually, I'll remove this tag and make my own. When watering pots, I don't stop until I see water running down the bottom. And there we go. Oh. 